Uh, I've been at Cal State Fullerton for nine years. And by far the biggest strength I feel is the autonomy. My research line really revolves around human performance. I'm specifically the muscular part of that. And so really, I'm interested scientifically in anything uh, that we can do that enhances human performance from a physical standpoint. So most of that stuff tends to be revolved around strength and conditioning related activities and maximizing power and force and endurance and things like that. So the biggest project we're working on right now is uh, intermittent fasting. And so what we're interested in is how this relates to muscle hypertrophy or your ability to grow muscle size. And if you're not familiar with intermittent fasting, it's become really, really popular for people trying to improve their health or fat loss. And so there's different styles of it, but the one that we're interested in is called 16-8. And so what that means is you restrict all your eating to an eight-hour window each day. And so we're comparing that to a standard 12 or 13-hour eating window. So all the participants get the same amount of food and protein and everything like that. We're just changing your eating window. And why we got interested is, again, there's a lot of research uh, looking at its potential benefits or detriments for things like fat loss uh, and for other markers of health. But no one's really looked at it from the perspective of what about somebody trying to improve their performance instead of just losing fat. Um, so another reason why that became interesting for us is now that all that information uh, has come together from the fat loss and health side, that's trickled over into performance. So we see a lot of athletes now that are either doing or interested in, in trying intermittent fasting. It's clearly the most comprehensive study we've ever done uh, because we're looking at markers such as physical performance, uh, we're looking at muscle size, we're taking muscle biopsies and looking at the molecular, cellular, and genetic components. We're looking at the gut microbiome. We're looking at even perceptive markers like enjoyment, sleep, mood, energy. And so it's the first project we've really done where we've tried to look at multiple physiological systems. Um, and, and why that's also gonna be really helpful is then we're gonna be able to specifically tell people if you're trying to gain strength or muscle size, either don't do this type of eating or go ahead and do this eating, it doesn't matter, or actually this eating is better for you to gain muscle size. It's gonna give us a whole bunch of practical take-home uh, answers for people and, and to use research, but scientists as well are gonna learn a ton about how muscle grows, shrinks, dies, and repairs. We're using everything from surveys, uh, to muscle biopsies, to one rep max strength tests, to ultrasounds, to examine muscle size, thickness, the angle that your muscle attaches to the bone. Yeah, so one group skips breakfast and one group doesn't. And so we're going to look at how that influences your ability to grow muscle mass when you eat the same amount of calories at the end of the day. Probably the biggest surprise uh, in this particular study and all of the studies we've done in my time here at Cal State Fullerton is really the differences between men and women in the training response and more specifically the lack of difference. Uh, the women aren't as different in a lot of these measures that we tend to think they are. So their ability to grow muscle mass, their ability to get stronger, what happens at the cellular, molecular, and genetic levels it's not nearly as different as we previously thought it was. So depending on what we find from the primary results, did they get bigger, stronger, et cetera, we're then gonna follow it up immediately with the molecular stuff and try to figure out why it happened or what explained it from the cellular perspective.